This is Tickle Me Elmo, and today we're going to turn him into Animatronic Me Elmo. Inspired by the 2001 science fiction film AI Artificial Intelligence, starring Jude Law and Hallie Joel Osment, who is also the little boy in Sixth Sense, we're going to make an Elmo that can walk along just like Teddy in the film. In the film, this was mostly a practical effect with someone walking behind with their feet attached to Teddy's feet, and the upper half of it was all animatronic with servos. We're going to do something similar with Elmo, but we're going to attach him to a remote control rig that rolls around on wheels behind him. This video isn't sponsored, but just a quick ad for ways you can support the channel. I have Patreon, so check out patreon.com slash xrobots, and if you don't like Patreon, I also have a YouTube channel membership. There's some affiliate links in the description to this video, including a two-month free trial for Skillshare, and of course if you sign up using those links, then I'll get some money. If you want to support me more directly, I also have my merchandise store, where I sell t-shirts, mugs, bags and socks, and I now have the new Performance Robots merchandise out. So I've essentially got a two-wheeled base, which means that it can drive around on the ground behind Elmo with his feet attached to the front parts here. Each of these slides in and out, which will help him do that walking motion, and each of the feet has a crank which tips the foot slightly forward as it picks it up. And that's going to allow him to look like he's tipping his foot forward as he takes a step, which of course happens with that slider. The whole thing's got four servos, one on each side to push the sliders and one to operate the crank, as well as two motors in the bottom to drive around. So I've assembled one side of this, so this servo now moves the crank, and we should be to see that takes the foot from a flat position to a raised and tipped forward position. So let's get the other one built and put the sliders in. So the base is made of two layers, one has motor recesses on the bottom, and on the other side that was printed flat down on the printer bed. And that means the overhangs weren't a problem, and these are the slots where the sliders go. So my motors are fitted into those recesses with a plate on each side, which is screwed through both layers. And I've got recessed socket caps there, so that the wheel can go flush on the outside. And the wheel is, of course, 3D printed. There's a captive M6 nut, which lives in there, with a grub screw that goes and binds on the shaft. And the tyre is 3D printed in NinjaFlex. So, of course, each of these sliders fits in here, which goes backwards and forwards, and we need to build the assembly at the back to push them with another two servos. At the moment, this is a bit back heavy, but of course, Elmo is going to be stood on here, and there'll be a rig to hold his body. And that's going to be an extension of this stick, which sticks into the back of Elmo's back to hold his body, and we'll have all the upper body animatronics mounted. So, I fitted the two servos on the back there, and we've got a servo horn with a lever that pushes that slider backwards and forwards, so it moves about 30 millimetres, which should be fine because he's only got short legs, so he doesn't need to take steps that are that big. On the back here, we've got an Arduino Mega, because we've got quite a few servos to control, so that should be no problem, and there's also a place to put the battery just in there. So I've wired in my Arduino to an NRF24 LO1 radio chip, which is what I'm using in a lot of projects now, and we're reading the data off the Arduino over USB. I'm using the Open Dog remote, because it's already got lots of switches and buttons and two joysticks, and that also uses the NRF24 LO1. The code for that is pretty simple. I'm using the RF24 library, and we just set up the pins there for the CE and CSN, and defined our data structure there, which is reading all of those buttons and joysticks off the remote. The rest of the stuff for the radio is in setup, including start listening, which opens up the radio and starts listening for data. In my main loop, I'm checking if radio data is available, and if it is available, then we reset a clock called previous safety millis, and we're using that to check if valid data's been received. If it's not been received for more than 200 milliseconds, we set all our joysticks to 512, which is the middle position. And that's basically a failsafe in case the battery goes flat in the remote or something, so Elmo doesn't just keep walking away with the last variable while we panic trying to catch him. If the date is good, then we just print that out to a serial terminal, so let's go and open one right now. And we should be to see the data from the remote there. And if I turn it on, 
then instead of reporting no data, it should report all of the stick positions. So if we wiggle the sticks, everything works, and we can see the buttons, all those ones and zeros working. And of course, what we had at the start there was the safety. If I go and unplug this again, it should realize within 200 milliseconds, there's no data and set everything back to the default values. I've put two motor drivers on the bottom, which are ABT4 drivers, which I think are 15 volts and about 20 amps each, which is more than enough for those motors. And those are mounted on the bottom there, so we've got battery power coming in, the wires that go out to the motors, and the signals that come in from the analog outpins of the Arduino. So now I'm going to use the right hand stick to control the robot base. So what we've got is the value from this stick mapped to both wheels. So when I push the stick forward, the robot goes forward, and of course when I pull it backwards, it goes backwards. And then what I've done is taken the middle position from that stick and made that a plus or minus swing around zero. And we've basically added that value to one wheel and taken it off the other wheel. So the result is when we move it sideways, of course, one wheel turns one way and one turns the other. And that makes this dynamically. So if we press forward and we move to the right, it should steer as well. Now this robot's pretty quick. It's far too quick for Elmo to be walking. So we need to constrain those values, but we've got more than enough torque there at low speed. He's probably going to walk pretty slow. So all we need to do is go and map our servos now to do a walking motion based on the relative speed that we drive. So I've wired all my servo signal leads into the Arduino and we'll use the servo library to drive those. The power from those is combined and that's going into a turning GBEC, which is a 5 volt 5 amp regulator. There's one of those tucked in there attached to the power, which goes to the 11.1 volt LiPo. So it's easy enough to program the servos to do a walking motion just with a step sequencer and some timers. But what you actually need to do though is make them move slower when I push the stick forward less and faster as I push the speed for and make the speed increase of the wheels so the legs stay in sync or at least the one moving backwards stays in sync with the ground. Now normally when you use the servo library to drive servos with an Arduino and you specify a position to go to, that servo will try and move there as fast as it can mechanically. So in order to actually slow those down so that we can vary the speed of the walking motion and how long those servos take to get from position A to position B, we're going to have to use the Arduino ramp library, which has been written by SiteSwap Juggler. And I'll put the link in the description to the video for the GitHub. And that library allows interpolation between point A and point B of any variable over a specific amount of time. So we can calculate that time based on how far I push the stick forward and therefore how fast the wheels are going. And that will actually ramp those servos in a linear fashion or some other curve that we choose from that library from point A to point B over that amount of time. And that means we can slow down the motion as we slow down the wheels, which are pushing the whole thing along. Now I've used a state machine to drive the positions from one point to another, and that's then setting a variable for the current servo position. And right at the bottom, I'm then writing those servos out, having done the interpolation over the walking speed, which is calculated from the stick position. This is getting a bit complicated now, so I'm going to publish all the CAD and code for this project. And again, I'll put the link in the description to this video. So the effect, of course, of this now is as I push the stick forward faster, as well as the wheels turning, the walking motion happens faster. So that's pretty slow, and we can see that's doing a nice walking motion, moving those legs backwards and forwards. And if I push faster on the stick, it should get quicker, as well as the wheels turning quicker. And if I let go, everything returns to the center over a shorter interpolation time. I've just temporarily attached Elmo with a clip and a bit of 3D print that goes in his back where his battery compartment is. Eventually we'll be gutting him to get animatronics in his arms and his head, but for now that'll hold him for testing. His feet are zip tied in, so the stirrups there with a couple of zip ties just to hold his feet down. So that kind of works, his feet are mostly in sync with the grounds, but what you'll notice is he's hardly picking his feet up at all, and that's because the toes are pivoting down as he does so, which is a bit like a human, and if you look at your own feet, you'll notice you hardly take your feet off the ground, really, they practically skid past the ground as you take the next step. But with characters like Elmo, and of course with the original Teddy puppet, 
they don't really walk like that. They walk more like a character, which is picking their feet up in a really overemphasized way to take each step. So I've messed around with the leverage angles and put one of the links on the front of the foot instead of on the back of the foot, which now means the foot picks up in a really overemphasized way, and I think that's going to be much better. So I'm pretty happy with that. So far, the only thing I'd change, I think, is to have actually a bigger stride length so we could extend that servo horn on the back that pushes the sliders forward and back so he takes a much more overemphasized step, which is something that might happen next time. The other thing is, of course, his upper body is wobbling around. At the moment, he doesn't really lead with his arms as he's walking like he should, and he should do that with the opposing leg and the opposing arm, so he walks like, well, a character in a really overemphasized way, I guess. So we'll be putting the upper body animatronics in next time where he'll get all that as well as functionality to move his head round and those things as well. And hopefully I can get at least two servos or two axes in each arm. So that's all for this video. Don't forget to check out the affiliate links I mentioned at the start, my Patreon, YouTube channel membership and my merchandise store. All right, that's all for now.